Hi everyone and good morning. Um, I'm going to be showing you two immune boosting garlic ferments today. Um, so Patrick and I were talking just before we started rolling about um, all the different kinds of things that we do for immune boosting purposes and we started to write a list but the list was like this big so rather than just uh, tell you all the things we do I thought that I would just start by telling you uh, what we've done today what, we, what we've done so far um, the first thing we did well it started last night but then I could go on and on but I'll just stop it last night um, we went to bed as early as we could after we'd had dinner we went to put the goats to bed we went for a walk and um, practiced our hunting skills and then read stories and then set the fire for the morning. <laughs> um, so we tried to go to bed as early as we could. Um, we tried to wake up with the sun, which we did. So we woke up just before dawn. So that's part of it, just sort of being in, uh, in the um, circadian rhythm to align that with the sun. Um, we, set, we lit the fire. So that was, we chopped the wood. We were thankful for the wood. So we started with some gratefulness. We hopped on our, Patrick and I hopped on our bikes. Um, we don't have a car, so being on our bikes and being hardy to the cold, which it is now here in central Victoria, um, it's starting to get very cold with these autumnal mornings and nights and days. Um, so we rode on our bikes down to the local lake. We stripped off and to be naked first thing out in the world is a beautiful thing. Um, we went swimming for five to ten minutes or so um, and then we're freezing and it was glorious and then we uh, danced on the deck <laughs> on the jetty and then um, put our clothes back on and then rode home sat by the fire had tea fed the chickens um, for breakfast we had uh, fermented pancakes with um, with some whey and some uh, from our cheese making some raw whey, some, uh, an egg from our chickens. Um, I'm saying I'm um, a lot, it's early still. Um, some acorn meal, some spelt flour and some buckwheat flour. And then we had it with um, our honey and some gifted blackberry jam and some yogurt. And now we're ready to talk about our, some of our ferments that we... You're gonna mention the argument? Oh yeah, we had an argument, um, which is also part of immune boosting, especially when we wake up and we're filled with oxytocin and all the good stuff, but also having our voices heard and being able to express that in a safe environment is part of yeah, feeling confident and feeling loved and valued even in the more challenging moments. So I love you, Patrick. Um, so we eat, try to eat something fermented with every meal um, and especially this time of year we really focus on other building up our medicine chest what can we grow what can we gather what can we ferment what can we preserve um, what can we prepare that is going to see us out through the cold and flu season um, so my go-to my personal go-to Patrick has other ones and I'll talk about that in a minute uh, but my personal go-to is garlic I really like its um, like antiviral um, antibiotic properties and I always feel much better after I've, if I've got a tickle or feeling a little bit vulnerable then I like to go for garlic uh, but I do find if I have it in its raw form then um, I do get a bit of an upset tummy so I like to ferment it which helps break down uh, the sugars in it and uh, make it much more as pre-digested when it's fermented so make it much more uh, palatable and um, easy to digest and easy to uh, ingest um, so when we were sitting by the fire before our argument we had some uh, we uh, sat and we peeled some of our homegrown garlic um, so so the ferments I'm going to show you this morning one is a sweet one one is a savory one and they both take uh, about six months to ferment so we do have some from previous years so we have very long cold winter seasons here so uh, even if what we 
um, ferment today is going to last us well into the cold season. Um, so the first one I'm going to show you is a honey garlic ferment. So just have a regular size jar and some peeled cloves and just going to put some in a jar like this. Maybe a few less because I need a few more for the next one. Um, I'm simply going to... We've got some of our honey from our bees here. So I'm simply going to cover the cloves with honey. And you can put as much as you want in. As long as all of the cloves are covered with the honey. So we eat, try to eat a lot of fermented foods for a number of reasons. The first one is because they taste really good. The second one is because it preserves and in increases the longevity of the food that we grow. Um, we do it because of the... Um, the now, what Indigenous people have known, you know, in every culture, what they've known for thousands and thousands of years is that um, fermented foods are good for our well-being. Now, what we know about the um, gut-brain axis and how great it is to eat fermented foods, that it's good for our our um, gut, um, our microbiome, but it's also, yeah, it's just good for whole body health. So people who eat a lot of fermented foods, I think, can. Uh, attest to the benefits. So I might give this to my assistant. Woody, would you like to take the spoon? Thank you. <laughs> you can just lick it if you want. And the gut regulates the immune system. So uh, that's a big one. So as I said in our um, doing lots of things with apples video, um, that the alliums, so leek and garlic and onions and chives, um, are full of prebiotics, which is what the probiotics in our guts uh, eat. So to have this, this is the garlic is the prebiotic and it'll turn into a probiotic once it starts. Once the honey will draw the liquid out of the garlic and it will be become quite runny. So at the moment, you can see there, that's going to take a long time. This is raw honey. And yeah, just a note about a couple of things, a few step backs, a few steps back, um, that in terms of uh, sterilizing, I just use very hot soapy water. I don't need to sterilize this jar because we're courting life. And so if I was preserving for a long time um, passata or fruit, stewed fruit, then I would um, sterilize my jars, but here I don't need to. So just hot soapy water when it's dry, then you can put your ingredients in. Um, and in terms of honey, uh, we're very fortunate that we have our own bees that we harvest honey from um, and if you don't have that then if you can just try to get uh, local honey is really good because it's got all the properties that you need for your local um, bioregion and also um, uh, cold extracted is good not heat extracted. Um, okay so we have our um, garlic in honey so what I'm going to do when I um, finish up with you guys here is that I'm going to make sure the lid is on really tight. I'm going to stick it in a cupboard and I'm going to just turn it on its uh, lid like this and then tomorrow I'm going to turn it back this way in the cupboard and then keep doing this until the garlic, the honey starts to get really runny and then when it does it's then you know that it's starting to ferment and so I'm going to keep doing that for the next two weeks. Just keep turning it because the garlic is going. It's got the. It's got um, oxygen in it, and it's going to want to pop to the top of the honey. And as it starts to ferment, every day I'm going to. Um, so in a couple of days, I'll start doing this. So I'm going to just make sure all of the honey is dripped down, and I'm just going to open the lid like that. Uh, in fermenting language, that's called burping, where you release the carbon dioxide. Make sure the lid's on really tight, and then stick it back. In the cupboard like that the next day like that open it up release carbon dioxide lid back on until it's really really runny and then i'm just going to keep it in the cupboard for six months and then 
in six months time I've got a couple here this is from 2018 so two years ago April 2018 and you can see how runny it is that's not going to take very long for this honey that we've just made today to get that runny and also you can see that it's gone dark and so this was the same color honey to begin with and you can see the change in color and consistency and so now what happens through the magic of fermentation is that the honey and the garlic swap properties so the garlic becomes honey the honey becomes garlic garlicky and so now whenever I've got a tickle or feeling a bit run down then I will take a clove and just munch on it and it doesn't have that sting of a raw clove of garlic um, and all the honey that's left over uh, so this is what I give to Woody to have so he just has that on a teaspoon if he doesn't want the garlic or I'll use some of the, um, the honey to braise meat or what I usually do is just use it in a salad dressing um, and here's one that I've got from uh, last year so 2019 and you can see that these cloves are a little bit bigger because they haven't been all of the um, the liquid in the garlic hasn't been drawn out yet um, so the reason that we put it in the cupboard uh, is because it doesn't want doesn't like to be um, in the light it's just a, a ferment that likes to um, it's a private ferment let's just put it that way it's like a, a laser uh, what are they called there's lights lava lamp. a lava lamp a garlic lava lamp okay and when I finished here I'm also going to put a label on it just so I can I know what what year it is so in two years time you can say oh yeah remember that day great so the next ferment I'm going to show you is a fermented garlic paste so I think I'll show you the end product first so this is what you can see I've had my fingers in there so this is um, a garlic kraut which is just like a garlic paste so it's two ingredients garlic and salt and through the magic of fermentation you can see the color has gone from this to this dark color so I'll just show you how to make that this is amazing and anything that you're cooking and you think oh what does it kind of need it needs that's that little something garlic kraut is your always your answer it's definitely my go-to and I can't make enough of it okay so put my garlic cloves into my food processor and I haven't actually tried to do this with a mortar and pestle uh, if you give it a go and it works or doesn't work please let me know so I'm just going to guess with the salt a um, couple of sprinkles I'd say and when I've taught this in the past people have wondered about botulism um, I've never had an issue with it so I can't talk to that so I'm going to grind it up make it into a paste excuse the noise Scoop it into a jar. So I recommend using non-iodized salt. They say for fermentation that's best. Uh, we get our salt uh, from the Pink Lake um, up near Dimbula and this was brought back by our neighbor Bob. So thanks Bob. Okay so scoop that into my jar. So I'm going to scoop all of that out. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about fermentation, Patrick wrote a book a couple of years ago called Refermenting Culture. Uh, if you'd like a copy of that as a PDF, then just message us and we'll send you a copy. Just looking at the history and the, as well as the health benefits of fermentation in the context of terrain theory which is really how we live our lives so making sure we not making sure but just being open and not fearful to handling moss and rocks and wood and honey and soil and just being part of life
so uh, again this will need to be burped I'm just going to sit this on my fermenting table you can have the lid screwed on you can have it not screwed on uh, this is really an amazing ferment to make um, and to have your kids watch you watch part of the process um, because it changes colors so profoundly and so miraculously I've had these um, I've done these ferments before and it's gone bright blue I've had it go green the last time I made it with this one here um, it, I filled the jar up so that was a lot of um, garlic clove peeling and it lifted the, the lid was just sitting there and it lifted the lid up like this and it went to kind of green and this was just sitting on it and then the next day it went back down again um, and then slowly over time it went from this beautiful greeny blue color to this now uh, brown color it was really amazing um, so yeah so this is about a year old but after six months it was ready and it takes on this kind of caramelly lemony garlicky salty flavor um, and the thing that I use this for uh, most often is for um, rubbing on meat that we have on roast but you can also just have it on toast have it on toast with a bit of honey is also really delicious um, yeah okay I'm just going to show you some other ferments that I do exactly the same way as this garlic ferment so I've got here some uh, grated ginger um, so you can see how liquidy this is and at first it took a long time like the garlic did to turn over um, and so yeah this is really delicious just to have a teaspoon of it and in Chinese medicine they call ginger the messenger because it's so good for our circulation and it helps all the different foods and all the different um, parts of our blood to get to where it needs components of our blood to get to where it needs to go in the body uh, here I've got a um, the last little remnants of a turmeric ginger ferment also just grated turmeric and then cover with honey uh, the turmeric one I love ginger but the turmeric one is probably my favorite uh, which is why there's not much of it left uh, this here is some blood limes um, that our food co-op got in and to eat them by themselves is really like candy they're really delicious and also um, I sometimes cut little pieces of it up and stick it in our fruit loaf or you can just sort of eat it by itself it's just magical uh, this one here is orange peel chili and black peppercorns and again uh, highly medicinal and um, delicious I've got here that our friend Rosie made thanks Rosie with our hops it's just the last little bit of our um, hops in honey uh, what else have I got last one here this is ginger turmeric lemon orange peel and peppercorns and again medicinal and the peel just goes candied and it was just fresh peel that we chopped up and put in the honey so these are just a couple of the natural flu shot ferments that we make every year. If you have any questions, uh, please send us a message or um, leave it in the comments. We have been overwhelmed by people sending us questions and messages, so we will get back to all of you. It might just take a while. Um, okay, viva!